what does this mean to you as it relates to traffic and walkability of our city? As I mentioned, I've lived in big cities all my life, New York and London, and I had no problem walking through those big cities. So I really don't agree with Ms. Chapman. Sarasota is a pretty walkable city. Um, I think most of us sitting here, and ostensibly you're sitting here because you live downtown, you're part of the, asso the association. You live down here because you wanted to be able to avail yourself of the amenities downtown, and, and because you're, you like walking downtown. That's the assumption I'm making. Everybody, you know, there, there's a bonus to living downtown and living in the city, you don't have to get in a car. I live downtown, I live in the, in the Rosemary District, and I walk downtown all the time. Um, I think Sarasota is a great walkable community. Um, I am a supporter of the circulator to keep cars off the street, to allow us to, those that can't walk, the folks that Pete refers to, they're able to hit all different parts of our, of our main street and hopefully get out to Marina Jack and maybe get out to St. Armand's. I'm a big supporter of the, uh, of the, of the circulator. I do hope it comes. Um, but, you know, I think we live, we live in cities, we live downtown so we can walk around. We like it. I'm a supporter of it. I love it. You know, I'm good for the multimodal faction, but at the end of the day, we are downtowners. We are city dwellers. We walk the streets. We enjoy it. And, uh, you know, what, what else could I say about it? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Hall. I think we do have a walkable downtown. And um, we also have some close to downtown neighborhoods that, that um, like to walk to downtown. We have some um, obstacles in the way, like Fruitville Road, to, <laughs> to get across for a couple of the neighborhoods, Rosemary District, Gillespie Park. Um, a lot of bicycles, a lot of people that live in my neighborhood and work and, and play downtown um, do so walking downtown. That's why they want to live in the neighborhood because it's close to downtown. An awful lot of people bicycling and they, and they seem to, bless their hearts, manage to get across Fruitville Road. Sometimes I don't know how, but um, anyway, I think we have a pretty walkable city, um, but I think we need to make it, certainly the pedestrian crossings need to be improved. Um, and I and I do support the downtown circulator, though. I think we need to um, we do need to have that to to move people around quickly and people that have issues with walking. You know, at this time of year, our candidates are running really, really hard, trying to get to more places than they have yeah, we're time. Walking downtown. More <laughs> <laughs> time than uh, their schedule allows, but I do want to give an opportunity. A number of you ask uh, put questions on your cards. Uh, that are very directed to a candidate uh, uh, specifically. And I'm going to tell you, I avoided those questions um, at this forum, and hopefully I know that they would be glad to answer any specific individual question. They all have websites. They're easily found uh, on, on their, um, by Googling them. That's become a pretty adjective, Googling them. And uh, at any rate, uh, you, you can get those questions. But I would like to take one or two questions from the audience. I'm going to uh, only take one or two because some of the candidates must leave here. They have other commitments, and I'm going to try to get them out of here uh, within a very short time frame. Uh, question. Oh, you have 30 seconds to ask your question. <laughs> so I do not want an editorial. I will cut you off if you take more than 30 seconds to answer your question. And what would you do, uh, each person, if you've lived here 15 years and all of a sudden, your neighbor, in my case, it's Marina Jack O'Leary's, started blasting music every Friday night till at least 10 o'clock. Usually they stop at 10. I call the police, they come, it goes down. You call the police the next week, they come, it goes down over and over again. You ask the police, what are the records? They don't have any. Your question. The question is, what would you do if you had a neighbor who moved in two doors away from you who started blasting music every day? Thank you. Well, I, I think there should be records. I, I think there might be. You know, if you have a police call, here's what you do. You ask the police officer for case number, and you get his, his card, you write the case number down, then you do have a record. Just start saving these cards, and you will have a record. Thank you. Who did, um, and I probably shouldn't do this, but yeah, beyond that, have you contacted anybody at the city? What have you done? Yes, talked to the city councilman, talked to uh, mm -hmm. um, Marina Jack owner, mm -hmm. the attorney, the 
This has been going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I think it's impossible. Marina Jack and all of the. Uh, they answered this, uh, Ms. Atwell's question is that uh, he, has, uh, and he has asked for city intervention and hasn't been satisfied with what he got. Okay. I want, I'll talk to you either afterwards or you email me. And you know, I'm not sure if you have already, but it sounds familiar or maybe something that's just recently. Please call me. We will get on this. Um, nobody should put up with that. If I've had neighbors where, and they say, talk to them first, work it out amongst yourselves. I get that, I've had that, but eventually I've had to call people that when they were partying in a pool all night long, you can't, you should never deal with that. Talk to me, okay? Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> I'll answer your question. Uh, if I had a neighbor doing that and I couldn't resolve with them, I would call the police as well. But as a potential commissioner, if that problem still going on, you know, that's I've committed myself to being the serve these next four years. And so that's what we're there for. If you can't resolve it, to use whatever, use the influence that we have to help an uh, individual like yourself resolve those problems. That's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chapman. I think that some of these uh, restaurants and bars are testing the sound ordinance right now and uh, pushing the limits on it. Uh, part of the issue is an intelligence-led policing issue, which is that in the concept of intelligence-led policing, you need to keep records and you find out where the problem spots are, where the problems are. Uh, that's not being done yet in our police department, but it is proposed and it's part of our official policy. And, and so we're in the process of implementing that. Um, that might eventually show where the problem is. Chief DePino has come to various neighborhoods as a candidate. I've been to many neighborhood meetings where Chief DePino says, what is your issue and we'll try to address it. So ask that they write the report because that is the basis for the data analysis for where the problem is. Um, we, there are speaker systems that tend to be more effective in this and maybe that needs to be investigated. Thank you. Ms. Holland? My experience with this has been um, calling the police, of course, is the first thing. And if you're not getting at the time it's happening, if you're not getting satisfaction on it, then you need to, to continue to go up the, up the ladder to ask for the supervisor. And if, that, if that, that doesn't resolve it, then you ultimately take it to the police chief. That's, a, that's the person who's responsible for that. If that, doesn't, if that doesn't do it, the city manager and then the city commission. Thank you, Mr. Dorfman. I, I would suggest the same procedure to the other candidate. Thank you. Uh, I am going to ask each candidate, I'm going to have to wrap it up, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to ask each candidate to take one minute to make their concluding remarks. We've been on many, many interviews and many, many forums. This is wonderful. Thank you all for coming. I mean, you talk about passion and investment in your community and in your neighborhood. Someone asked me um, at one of the interviews, why do you want four more years? It wasn't four years enough. Now, with what's going on, no. I mean, I, I, I'm not finished. And they said, when are you finished? When are you finished doing what you want to do for your community? And I said, I can't really answer that, but at the end of my next term, if I'm lucky enough to be elected, I want to continue walking my 25 miles a week in all neighborhoods and look at restaurants, look at buildings, look at things that I had a vote on. When I go to Robert Taylor, I go to Newtown and I look at the Mediterranean, I look at Janie Poe and I see my name on that, <coughs> that will be there long after I'm gone, that I voted for that. And I want hotels and down everywhere, that, that I had a part of that. So that when I walk 25 miles a week and I'm 85, and I will do that here, and I will see that I had a part of that. However hard some of it was, I want to continue doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chapman, we're going to go right down. Yes. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I was the president of the Civic League, and as part of the president of the Civic, being president of the Civic League was helping to found the Good Government Campaign School. And I don't believe in, in stealing campaign signs. Gordon, raise your hand. Five of the, my signs from his yard were stolen. My signs were vandalized as well. So. 
I don't believe in that, and I do believe we have a city of high standards. Our quality of life is the goose that laid the golden egg. It is the basis of economic development. We need to preserve our quality of life, preserve the livability of this great jewel that is our city. And I'm running to work to preserve our quality of life. We have a lot of high level people who could have lived anywhere and we need to make sure they want to live here. Thank you and I would appreciate your vote on March 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being for, thank you, Richard, for being here this evening. Um, I would just simply ask you as voters to seriously consider my over 30 years of community involvement in my business experience and my institutional knowledge of, of working in and with and for this city for so many years and vote for me, Linda Holland, on March 12th. Thank you. I think it's been very, very apparent that you've got a very clear choice to make. You can support candidates who don't want to see anything here, no matter what it was, any place, any time, anyhow. Or you can support a candidate that has a vision for the city, and you have to connect the dots. Without good, solid growth, a city does not remain vital. Without good, solid, smart growth, you have no opportunity to increase our tax base. If you're worried, and all of us are worried, about what's going in and out of our pockets, understand if we don't have any growth, if we don't have other sources of revenue, commercial revenue, then it's coming out of your pocket. And that's the honest truth. I asked, the, I asked our finance director, what will it take to get this city whole? And he said, we would have to double everybody's taxes. So the choice is clear. Say no to everything or concentrate on growth in the places that growth is required and can be used, where it's the benefit of many, many people. Thank you very much for your time. Please vote for me on March 12th. Thank you. Again, uh, thank you so much for having us here. And I, I'm genuinely grateful for the opportunity to uh, try to give you a window into my thinking for why I'm running for city commission. I'm sure probably all of us are probably exhausted from the pace of this campaign. Uh, but these kind of things are so necessary, uh, obviously, for you, the voters, to kind of know where we're coming from and what we're thinking. Uh, but it's also just as beneficial, maybe more, more beneficial, uh, for us to, to get a window into your thinking as well. And I think that's the only way to govern effectively, is to listen to those who you're going to serve, not only those who get you in, but those who don't vote for you. You have enough responsibility to serve uh, them as well. But one of the flaws, I think, in, in the vetting process is that in these forums, uh, we're, we're just stating positions, what we think, and of course we all have our views and positions on things. But I, and, that, and those are important to help give you a sense of how we think. But what I think is more important is that you voters uh, know that the voters know the principles that we govern by. And I think principles are even more important than positions. And, and the principles we govern by are very important. Uh, and my principle is to listen, to genuinely listen to everybody to consider people's viewpoints so I can better serve. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I've been here 30 years, and in this 30 years, I've seen a number of really big projects built, and I didn't see any more vitality. What I saw was more traffic. You can't build your way out of this. Uh, no, whatever, whatever uh, the developers would like you to believe, if you try to build your way out of what you'll do is you'll line their pockets with your own money. Now, as far as the allegation that the taxes will have to be doubled, I talked to the same financial director and I asked the question a little bit differently. I said, is there enough non-essential, non-core functions of city government that we could cut those and balance the budget? And he said, Yes, there was. Depends on how he has. Now, next Monday, Ringling Pizza, come and see me for pizza. I'll, I'll buy it five to seven. Thank you very much. You know, as a voter, you're always concerned uh, because the candidates have to work so hard and they're, they're not doing it for the compensation. If you don't know what a city commissioner makes on an annual basis, look it up. It, it, it's very, very astounding. They are making, if they make even pennies on their on an hour of time. So 
Uh, you always worry about getting the best and the brightest. And I think one of the things we're very fortunate in Sarasota is we have six candidates, whether you agree with them or not, who are our best and brightest citizens, who are willing to stand up and represent us in the very best possible way. So I want, to, I want you to give them a hand and, and thank them. Very much. The only mistake you can make is go to vote and not take someone with you who you don't think is going to vote. Give them a ride, take them with you. Early voting starts Monday, March 4th, goes through to Friday, March 8th, and then election, I'm, I'm sorry, Saturday. through Saturday, and then the um, uh, election day is the, the 12th. Get out and vote and take people with you. We need a big turnout. I have, and I have a couple of things on your way up. Number, number one, we wish that you would all join both of our organizations because we like to work together and get more members. Secondly, next Wednesday, March 6th, uh, our board meeting is here in this building on the second floor. Chief Lupino will be coming to our board meeting at 8 a.m. March 7th in Five Points Park, we are having a free concert from 5 to 7 p.m. It's a jazz group, pretty soft music. And, um, and March 21st, remember, is the luncheon that we're all sponsoring. At, uh, it's going to be at the new uh, first floor of the parking garage called the Francis. Tickets are $40. The uh, public DSA. Thank you very much for coming.